Welcome to another episode of Wayne's Work Vlog. Today I am kind of knocking out all the little projects that tend to build up. I've just got a bunch of small things I need to take care of. The survival knife shift knob is a little loose, so I need to drill a recess into the actual shift lever so that the lock pin will actually hit the indentation in the shift lever and keep it from rattling loose. I have these Glock Airsoft mags that you've probably seen the other video for that are leaking. Two out of three are just leaking. I cannot figure it out. So if you guys know about that, comment that below. Also, if you didn't know, the raffle for the Harley has been ended. I've refunded everyone's money because we did not reach our goal of 1,000 tickets. May try again later in the season, around tax time or something when everybody's got some money. I don't know. Otherwise, it's back up for sale on Craigslist so we can keep moving forward with new projects. But in the meantime, I have a LED light bar I need to install on in the front of the car. I have the shift lever I need to get the slack out of. And I've got to get these mags to stop leaking. So any of you guys know anything about these co2 mags comment below why these are leaking I think I've narrowed it down to either the spring itself is not holding it shut or this red o-ring that usually goes here is failing can't really figure it out so I'm kind of just trying everything at this point to see if I can figure out what is actually leaking I've tried stretching the spring so that it keeps better contact on the o-ring itself i don't see an o-ring inside there but it seems like that would be where it would be sealing and not sealing because it's all coming out of the blow through hole where it goes into the gun so at this point i am pretty much at a loss as to why this thing continues to leak unless that's another o-ring all right well that's some progress ah I also orange paint and number my mags so that if I drop them in the woods, they're a little easier to find. And I can track which one's leaking because I have them numbered so I'll know number three is leaking. Makes things a little bit easier for later when you're off the field and you need to fix your gear. Okay, so I think I fixed number three. It seems to be sealing up There's this little kind of filter over the input valve area, and I think it was just binding up a little. I'm gonna try that on the number two mag, and hopefully that works. All right, so I got number three working. Number two, I still cannot get to work. It just wants to leak. I think there is a tear on the green O-ring seal. It's more of like a plastic seal than an O-ring, but looks like there's a little crack in it, so it's not gonna seal up properly. I really don't know what to do at this point on this guy. So if anybody knows where to get parts for the CO2 valves or just an entirely new valve assembly for WeTech CO2 mags, hit me up in the comments below. All right, not sure how well you can see this, but there's like a little movement in the shift handle because this guy is just kind of grinding around on the surface of the shifter shaft. So I need to make an indention in the shaft right about there so that this lock set screw can actually penetrate into the dent and it will keep it from moving around like that. All right, we can see where the original spot was. So now we simply just need to drill out a dent right there. It would probably help to use a punch to get a start hole going. But as you can see, now we have a little dent right there that the tip of this countersink can actually fit into. And that should keep it from moving around. What the hell? <laughs> I was wondering what was rattling around in there. Good to know. Seems to be a little bit better. I'll probably get it a little tighter. Just need some better Allen wrenches. These are absolute garbage. For this guy that I got in the mail, not real sure where I want to put it. But obviously it needs to be somewhere that is easy enough to mount the brackets that came with it. Just got to find a spot that they'll actually work. Obviously this is just temporary until I get the front bumper built. And then I can put this on the bumper itself down low. It's just so dark here in the winter. And I need high beams. So I'm going to run this off of the high beam circuit.
Now because this is some thin metal here, I've got some fatter washers to help kind of spread the load out so that the weight of the light bouncing up and down doesn't actually bend the metal. And then I'll paint this once everything's mounted up, obviously. So I tried a couple of different ways to get these lights to be wired into the high beams so that when I turn the high beams on, this and this cuts on. But because these are two wire lights, no matter what I do, when I feed power into these, it back feeds into these. So I'm going to have to set up a wire schematic that has kind of a backflow preventer to where that this doesn't cut on when these high beams are on. Until then, the high beams operate this and these shut off. When I shut the high beams off, this goes off and these stay on. There's headlights on and there's high beams on. So I'll try a couple of different ways to get those to be wired up the way I want. But for now, I still need to make the front bumper and I'll worry about that when I do the final fit and finish for everything. But like I said before, the Harley giveaway has been terminated because of lack of support. I may try it again at a later date. Until then, it is for sale on Craigslist. So be sure to check it out there on the Craigslist. Colorado Springs, 1954 Harley Davidson. Taking any reasonable offer, obviously I have projects I need to complete. I have bills I need to pay, so I need to get that bike sold. If you have any constructive criticism, post it in the comments below. Like the video if you liked, subscribe if you want. And as always guys, keep on modding.